Selden was a vain, glorious fraud. And yet, brother, and yet, a bow incapable of bending will eventually break. Hey guys, Pete here. Today I thought I'd look at some of the promo stuff Apple TV Plus put out ahead of the Foundation finale and talk about some of the ongoing mysteries in the show. There's a finale trailer, which had some new footage mixed in with stuff we've already seen, and a sneak peek clip from episode 10 that features Brother Day addressing the Brother Dawn situation. What's interesting about these is that they hint at a big shift in thinking for the genetic dynasty, but the way it's being presented makes me more than a little suspicious suspicious. So we'll talk about that and what other questions might get answered in the finale and which ones might not right after this quick spoiler warning. If you're not caught up with the Foundation series through episode 9 or you don't want to see things from episode 10, then this video won't be for you. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. The finale for the first season of Foundation is titled The Leap, and we have an episode summary that reads, An unexpected ally helps Salvor broker an alliance. A confrontation between the brothers leads to unthinkable consequences. The first part of that seems to be referring to Harry Selden, who we saw show up at the end of the last episode. The second part seems to be related to the official sneak peek video, where we see Brother Dawn talking from the throne about his experience on the Maiden. Since Brother Dawn is standing in front of him, it appears that he's delivering his decision about how to deal with the fact that he's been altered and is no longer a perfect copy of Cleon I. He says while he was away, he had much time to reflect on their dynasty. He met pilgrims who worked their whole lives just to walk a spiral of salt in hopes that they might be granted a vision before they die. How the dynasty was challenged by Halima, saying that a soul incapable of change is doomed to stagnation. And how Harry Selden prophesied something similar. Which you gotta love Brother Dusk's response to when he says that Selden was a vainglorious fraud. It seems like he's still salty that Harry came to prominence during his reign. And Brother Day responds to him by saying, a bow incapable of bending will eventually break. Which, I mean, that sounds like he's interested in changing things up. It makes it seem as though his trip and pilgrimage have helped him see the light. That maybe this whole genetic dynasty forever thing isn't the best course of action. And in the new trailer, we see him flipping out in a rage, smashing the glass case that holds Cleon the first body. He's literally smashing the genetic dynasty, or at least the genetic material that they're drawn from. He's just smashing the case, so I guess it might not have any real effect on the original inside. But again, this looks to reinforce the idea that Day is moving away from the idea of the genetic dynasty. As I mentioned in the opening though, this does seem suspicious to me for a couple of reasons. First, the dynasty is going to fall, one way or another, according to psychohistory. So it doesn't seem likely that they'll turn things around briefly just to have it collapse down the road. I expect that the empire will be in decline and generally make bad decisions until it no longer exists. Then there's just the fact that they're making it look like that's what's going to happen. Because I don't think there will be a rehabilitation for the Cleons, it just makes it feel like this is a setup for a twist. I wish I had something a little more solid to add to that, but there's not really any other footage of them in the trailer other than Day screaming no in the throne room. And that's out of context, he could be yelling about anything. As far as the mystery of what they'll do with Dawn, this does hint that they may not kill him, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they would let him go on to take his place on the middle throne either. And just to address it, because I saw a lot of people asking about it in the comments, I do think this is the altered Dawn. There was a theory that they might be switched during the raid, and that Dusk brought the wrong one back. And I get the point about the nanobots, it does seem odd that they showed them healing his arm a couple of minutes before that, but if you rewatch the scene, it doesn't look possible for there to be a switch. One of the first soldiers through the window goes straight for the altered Dawn and grabs him, holding him by the window until the end of the shootout. So I'll be curious to see how that all plays out. 
Beyond that, there's just a couple of other new clips in the video. Brother Day with Azora in the garden. She looks like she's been imprisoned. And story-wise, if she can't give them something to catch the people responsible for what happened, then what exactly would she be able to offer them? She was complicit in the conspiracy. She was caught red-handed. And so I don't imagine this character is long for the world. And on top of that, he does the little hand gesture thing with his fingers. And it all adds up to what looks like a death sentence to me. Then there's this shot of Hugo on the Evictus again that was in the Saga featurette. Looking at this now, we can see Rowan and the Thespin leader behind him and can imagine that this is after the skirmish at the vault. It looks like they were able to stop the jumps that the Invictus was doing, but it's hard to say what's happening in this particular shot. Then there are a few different looks of Gale on Synax, but they don't really give much away. In the first one, you can see that she's made it to the surface safely. And unsurprisingly, the water level did rise. Everything looks somewhat underwater. We saw her entering the atmosphere in the cryopod, and it does sort of look like she's stranded there alone now. In another shot, we see her dive into the water, which seems to be tied to the shot of her swimming from the featurette trailer. So I suppose she'll probably find something underneath the water, but at this point, it's pretty much anybody's guess. As far as the big questions from the series going into the finale, after what happened with Dawn, it seems even more likely that the Star Bridge was part of a coordinated attack. But with so much other... But as I said in my last video, with so many other things to tie up in this last episode, I kind of doubt that we're going to get an answer to who's behind that in the first season. This seems like something that's going to be ongoing. I feel the same way about what's going on with Gale as far as her being able to feel the future. In my last book to show video, I talked about how it's getting harder to understand what the second character that's wrapped up in that story is. So I'm just hoping we'll get some kind of idea of what she's doing there in the future. Remember, over 130 years is going to pass before she gets to Synax, and I'm just hoping for some hints as to what her story is developing into. The Vault was one of the big questions throughout the season, and we sort of know what's going on there, but in the finale, I expect to learn a lot more about how that got there, and how the show version of Harry intends to use that alongside the development of the Foundation on Terminus. I saw there was questions about whether Harry is real or if he's a projection. I'm firmly in the camp of projection. I'm just not sure if it's the same as what we saw on The Raven or not. Specifically in the show, part of Harry's creating the narrative was to die, to help to motivate the original settlers when they first got to Terminus. I feel like most of the ideas I've read about him managing to heal himself or something similar on the way to Terminus are all a pretty big stretch. I'm guessing what he told Gale was true, and part of that uploading of his consciousness involves appearing at the vault, and I'm looking forward to find out more about that before the season ends. And then the last remaining big mystery is what's going on with Demerzel. Based on what happened with her and Halima, it looks like the Cleons have altered her in some way where her primary directive is to protect the dynasty. Not any one of them as individuals, but the dynasty as a whole as far as I can tell. And like the conspiracy with the Starbridge and Brother Dawn, I feel like this is not something we're going to get the answer to by the end of this season. In one of the conversations I read with David Goyer, the showrunner, he said that we were going to get some of the prequels in season two. So I'm hoping there we'll get a better idea of how she became the character that she is in the TV show, how she ended up to be such an integral part of this dynasty, and then maybe what that might mean in relation to the fact that it is coming to an end. And I think that's about it as far as what I wanted to say about the finale, and that seems like a good place to leave things. Let me know in the comments what you're hoping to see in the finale, what questions you have, what questions you hope they'll answer, and what you're hoping that they'll cover in the next season. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and thanks for watching, I'll talk to you soon.